rose again over the edge. <laughs> but I know who I am. I'm Ron Stoker, and I am the elected official on this committee from the South Valley up the valley to uh, Darby and Sula. That area has had mining, logging, cow-calf ag, and hunting as our main uh, occupations, uh, industry, um, income generating activity. Mining quit a number of years ago and the Felspar mine quit uh, gold. Uh, mining pretty much up the West Fork has uh, uh, got down to uh, maybe one or two people that mess around a little bit with it. Cow-calf has been diminishing. Uh, you heard the story about uh, uh, Bob Whetstone. Uh, I happened to visit him with Bob late the morning after the dog was killed. And uh, I'll tell you, he was not a happy rancher at that moment when Mom's dog was killed. Now there's uh, stories, as you know, from French Basin where a uh, man come out and the wolves had enticed uh, one of his two prize labs and they killed his lab. And uh, so those activities are going on uh, down in the South Valley. Now, over the last few uh, weeks and months here, uh, as we got closer and closer to hunting season, more and more discussions at the coffee shops has gone on about the wolf. At this point, I would have to tell you that the people in the South Valley are so upset, so mad, that 99% of them would go for a total elimination of the wolf. That's how serious and radical uh, Darby area and Sula area West Fork has uh, become over the wolf issue. The sporting goods store down there told me just this morning that he had a significant drop in his revenue because of uh, uh, hunters not coming. The reputation is that we've lost all of our elk. And so it's had a direct impact on uh, that sporting good business down there. The a real estate agent uh, whose family owns uh, cabins in the Camp Creek area told me about an hour ago that uh, they used to be able to go for a walk around and see uh, on a poor day maybe six moose in that area. On a good day as many as 15 and it's zero. The wolves have taken all of the moose out of uh, the Camp Creek drainage uh, in that area. The uh, Old pictures that are available in the Darby area do not show wolves as a local uh, uh, animal that was being taken for its fur. Most of the pictures have coyotes that are called wolves, and I think there's a, a distinct crossover in misunderstanding as to whether they're coyotes or a smaller species of timber wolf there. The wolves. Uh, in the valley are now pushing all of the elk and deer that are the mule deer. And to me, mule deer are uh, a strange critter because they do not shy away from uh, humans. Uh, the moose are the same way. They don't seem to shy away from, to me, a pack could virtually walk up to mule deer and, and moose and take them down. The elk, they're more herd instinct than they're moving down into the valley floor for protection. But along with the elk coming down, the wolves are going to follow their food supply right down into our backyard. Now, one of the few commercial ranchers, uh, cow-calf operators, has cut his herd in half uh, in the Sula French Basin area down there because of the depredation of the wolves when they're a little bit further up in, in the uh, mountains. And as Mr. Faust said, the cows are being run, the calves are not near as big, and all of that is money out of the rancher's pocket. So the South Valley is adamantly uh, getting a real tough head of steam. And as most of you know, uh, Darby, Darby folks are pretty tough individuals, and they are sick and tired of losing their winter meat supply, usually in the form of elk or deer, and their businesses being destroyed because of the corridor and the encroachment of the Canadian 
timber wolf coming across from the uh, big wilderness area. Uh, folks, I'll tell you, it's, if we don't get back to the original wolf numbers, which the, is 300, 100 for each state, and that's where the Malloy decision on uh, distinct population segment uh, comes into play. Malloy was following previous decisions on endangered species. Either everybody had the same kind of a management program, and in the case of the wolf, Wyoming had him as a predator, and that's why his ruling was that they should go back on to the endangered species. But there's a movement to remove the political barriers, the state lines within uh, Montana and Idaho and Wyoming, and perhaps even go to uh, wolf-free zones. By that, it would mean that any wolf in the wolf-free zone could be uh, destroyed. Wyoming uh, did have this predator category, and I'm not sure that Beloy's decision was based on any science. It was on prior precedent of what endangered species decisions had followed. Everybody or nobody. And that's kind of a tough way to go. The state of Montana is split by Highway 90. Those that are above Highway 90 are an endangered species, and they could be killing your uh, sheep, your horse, your dog right in front of you, and you better not mess with them. I'm not sure where that would go with your child, but I'm sure that there would be some action taken. But south of Highway 90, they are an experimental, non-essential population. So we have two different management criteria going on, north of Highway 90 and south of Highway 90. So uh, folks, if we don't get back to the original 300 within the whole state, plus 10 breeding pairs for the, a few years there, we're going to have a crisis like you've never seen before in your lifetime as far as wildlife management goes on in this uh, in this western state, this Montana, this western Bitterroot Valley. So folks, back the program, and I hope that uh, Representative Reberg's um, endangered species bill takes charge and takes care of many of these problems. I'm sorely disappointed to hear about Senator Tester's last minute uh, destruction of that uh, 6028 bill. Thank you all for coming. And uh, let's do some questions. All right, before we go to the questions, I have a statement to read here from Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, and they couldn't be here. No, it's, their statement will tell you why. Because Fish, Wildlife, and Park has appealed Judge Malloy's decision to return the gray wolf to the Endangered Species Act, Fish, Wildlife, and Park has been advised by legal counsel to avoid interaction with defendants without legal representation present. Wolves have been recovered for eight years. Fish, Wildlife, and Park welcomes any efforts that would result in management of the gray wolf being returned to the state of Montana. Fish, Wildlife, and Park has demonstrated our ability to manage and recover wildlife for over 100 years. The wolf is no exception. There simply needs to be a balance on the landscape between predator and prey and landowner interest. So for that reason, we do not have a representative from Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. 